My name is Greg Story. I'm a graduate of Griffith University in the Modern Asian Studies faculty, ended in 1975. I am the president of Dale Kennedy Training Japan. Um, the first thing, Greg, can you just tell us about Dale Cunningham Training Japan? Let me talk a little bit about Dale Cunningham Training Japan. This is actually the 51st year for Dale Cunningham Training to be in Japan. So that's quite a long time as a foreign training company. We're a corporate training company, and we cover a number of areas around sales, leadership, management, presentation skills, uh, process improvement, those types of things. And we serve both domestic Japanese companies and foreign companies who are based here in Japan. Our main aim, though, is to help people to boost their careers and companies to boost their performance through the ability of the people working for them to be more capable and more productive. Is um, Dale Carnegie training just in Japan or is it a global enterprise? Dale Carnegie is not just in Japan. It is actually in more than 90 countries around the world. There are, in fact, it's a franchise organization, so there are 190 franchises around the world. We actually teach in more than 30 languages across those 90 countries. Now, Dale Cunningham Training's objective for our clients is actually quite a difficult objective. It's behavior change on the part of the participants of our training because you can get the training, watch the TED lecture, read the book, you know, get the article, but you don't do anything with it. This is the nexus where we really have to break through and help people to use what they learn in the training and apply it into their careers, into their jobs, into their companies, so that there's an outcome that is something that's viable for both the company and the individual. Are you able to explain briefly how that process works? How you're able to effectively change behavior? Yeah, it's the behavior change piece is quite complex. It's not something that's so easy to do, otherwise everyone would be doing it. But Dale Cunningham is quite specific around that. We have 250 hours of training required for our trainers to become certified. That is a huge amount of training. And the reason for that is because what we do is rather complex. Self-discovery is a big piece of it. When you own the information, you tend to use it more. So we spend a lot of time drawing out of people, more the Socratic method of drawing out of people things they already know or making clear things which they haven't quite really gelled for them yet. That is really the job of the instructors. It's quite, it's a hard task, I have to tell you. Being an instructor myself, I know how hard that is. That's one part of it. The other part is we do lots of interactive work. It's a very, very fast-paced training methodology. Japan loves lecture. Old-style Japan training is the teacher, lectures, lectures, lectures. You just sit there passively taking notes. This is quite different. This is highly interactive. Uh, lots of getting up and, and talking, uh, presenting, uh, self-designing, group work, that type of thing. So for Japan, it's quite a modern, different style of training than what the Japanese traditional companies would offer. Why is the training you do, uh, Dale Carnegie training, so critical in Japan? The current thing with Japan with training is most people in the traditional style in Japanese companies rely on what they call OJT, which is on-the-job training, which means that your seniors teach you everything you need to know. Well, if you've got a really hot group of seniors in the company, your upper directors or your senior leadership are really on the ball and they're the ones coaching you, fantastic, that's great. But if they're mediocre, which in most parts in Japan, unfortunately, they are, uh, then you've got a bit of a problem there about what's the source. You know, what's the source? What's the, uh, what's the curriculum base for what they're teaching? And it's pretty thin. So really, Japan has been through a lot in the last 20, 30 years with downturns in the economy, earthquakes, etc. you know, radioactive uh, power stations blowing up. There's been a lot going on. So it really has got to a point where on-the-job training has seen its last legs. They need to have new management ideas, new training ideas to reinvigorate the companies, to go to the next level. And that is what they are seeking from us. President of, of Dale Carnegie Training, what does your day-to-day -day role involve? Mm. As the president of Dale Carnegie Training in Japan, we are a small company, relatively, you know, compared to most of the big Japanese companies. So, as the president in a small company, you're doing everything, basically. But primarily, my job is strategy, of course, looking for the direction for the company, 
I spent a lot of time too uh, working with the marketing team because for us as a foreign entity in Japan, uh, getting the message out, getting Japanese companies to know that we're here, I mean, particularly they know the brand name. Dale Carnegie is a fantastically strong brand name in Japan, but to know the detail of what we do or to know the full extent of what we can do is not so easy. So we have to really spend a lot of time uh, working with the marketing team to get that out. I have a director of training who takes care of training quality, so uh, I work with him very closely, of course, but that's his primary responsibility. And also, I do what we call in Japan top sales. Top sales is a Japanese term taken from English, which means that the president is also a salesperson. So for a lot of uh, my opportunities are with fellow presidents, so it's much easier for someone with my relative rank to get to meet the president of a, of a Japanese company or a foreign company, to have that access. And so I have the opportunity myself to also present the company and to sell our training into those companies. What do trainers do on a daily basis for us? Well, we have two varieties, if I can use that word, of trainers. We have one group who have their full-time jobs. They've been sent to the course or they've read the book, the How to Win Friends and Influence People, and they've come to the training and they love it. And they come through the course and they are just totally committed to it. And they love it so much, they want to teach it. So for them, they've got their career and it's really benefiting their career, but they want to be involved with Dale Carnegie. So weekends and nights, they would, they would train for us. Then we've got the other group. These are people who've got their own small training company. They may have some existing curriculum from somewhere else and they're looking for more opportunities to teach. So they will come and do that 250 hours. It doesn't matter which variety you're in. You still have to do the 250 hours of training to certify. And they will then come in and take our classes, become certified, and then they will teach for us uh, on a contract basis as we need them. So we will have uh, a client with a particular need, uh, it might be a retail client, for example, and we'll have one of our trainers who comes from a retail background uh, who's gone through the training, and they might want leadership. So we're looking for someone who teaches leadership for us, retail background, and we will match that trainer with that particular client. And the other big thing, is it doesn't matter, uh, again, which group you're coming from, you must have run a business. You must have run a business. Because if you said to me, look, uh, I've been doing training for 10 years, I've been internal training for my company, I want to train for Dale Carnegie in Japan, sadly, we'd have to refuse. We'd say, I'm sorry. Uh, unless you've run a business, we can't use you. Because what we want are business people who we then train to be trainers. Because in that classroom environment, your ability to be empathetic with what people are talking about, to understand the issues, to add that little bit of extra from your experience is immensely important. That's what we're really looking for. What, uh, what are the biggest challenges? I might do this in two parts, actually. What are the biggest challenges that Dale Carnegie Training faces here in Japan? We think about what are the biggest challenges for Dale Carnegie Training in Japan. I talked a little bit before about one of my key roles was looking after the marketing area. And that is really, I think, one of the the break points for us, we've done quite well in the last few years with the English-speaking uh, foreign community, what we call the Gaishke, the uh, foreign corporates here, and getting our brand name recognition really working well. We're very, very well known now in that group. It's the bigger Japanese market, which is a little bit harder to crack, and well, one of the obvious reasons for that is money, because advertising to the foreign corporate community here, there's a limited uh, group of media, which you can use for that, and so it's not that expensive. The Japanese media, though, you're talking, you're talking major money here. So it uh, makes you take a bit of a pause of the breath when you look at what you've got to spend, but that's what you've got to do. You've got to try and get in there. So we've been doing a lot with our business social media, with our YouTube channel, with our online uh, area, trying to penetrate into that market. But at some point, you know, you're going to spend money, and that's where, to get that brand awareness, you've got to get into those right magazines, uh, getting that type of media, but it is very, very expensive. What about for you personally? What are the biggest challenges you face um, as, as president of the company? Yeah, and for me as the as the president, what are the key challenges for me? Uh, it's keeping things in balance. I think you know, as a again a small company, you have to invest to grow, uh, but your investment means money's out the door today, and the money will come back in, but the money comes back in later. So in that between the money going out and the money coming back in period, uh, it's hard. You know, that's the hard part. Cash flow, managing cash flow, managing that investment, uh, bringing new people on to grow the business. Because Dale Carnegie 
is a particular philosophy. It's his whole 30 principles of human relations that we're based the whole company around. So we have to interact with each other as role models for those principles. We have to interact with our vendors. We have to interact with our clients. We have to interact with everybody in that way. So it's a little bit more demanding than just being a company. You're a company with a purpose. You're a company with a philosophy. You're a company with a set of very clear guiding principles. So I have to keep all of that very much to the forefront because we are the brand through how we live those principles. So I have to make sure the people I hire and the way we run the company reflects the beliefs that we have about how people should interact with each other based on what he's outlined in the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. What are the specific challenges Japan throws up for the organization as opposed to other Dark Carnegie training in other countries? I think scale for us is one of the issues. It's a little bit different as a challenge to other countries. If you think about uh, those 190 franchises that I spoke about before, many of them are relatively smallish territories because Dalkani started in North America, you see, and so they managed to, to carve those territories up into relatively smaller sections. We're covering all of Japan, so it's a very big market. I mean, from where we're sitting, if you get up high enough and you look around the sort of horizon for 30 kilometers, you're sitting, you know, 30 million people. And that's just where we're sitting. And then you've got the whole country, 127 million people. So trying to penetrate such a big, competitive, you know, well-heeled market, not that easy. Uh, we have lots of competitors, lots and lots of competitors, from the very big players down to the one man, one woman bands. So how do you break through? How do you break through all that noise? I think for us, that is one of the critical issues. And part of it is quality, uh, part of it is consistency. Again, it's a very thin pipe through which we draw our trainer team. And so they are, they are the elite. They are the Rolls Royce of trainers in Japan. And that gets attention. So word of mouth very important, reputation very important, and then as I said before, trying to uh, get that message out through our ability to use the media, uh, use paid media to do that. Um, with your particular role, what do you love most about it? Well, if you'd ask me what's my most favourite part of my role uh, running this company, I guess uh, I personally love the challenge. I, I love building things. I love uh, trying new things, I love experimenting. So in all the roles I've had in my career today, whether it was with uh, Austrade, setting up a new operation in Nagoya from zero, uh, whether it was coming to uh, work in the Shinsei Bank, uh, going into retail banking with no banking background particularly and, and turning that around, uh, coming into the National Australia Bank and trying to broaden the range of things we did there, they're all very great challenges for me. Uh, and coming into Dale Carnegie as well, it's again, it's another one of those very major challenges of building the company, building a reputation, establishing the brand in, in particular pockets that don't know the brand, um, building the people within the team. There's lots and lots of layers to running a company, but it's that challenge factor that gets me up every morning and looking forward to coming to work. And I'm, I'm a permanent student or a perpetual student. I have never stopped studying. And, I think uh, you know, when I was at university, sometimes my fellow students say, oh, I can't wait to get out of here, I don't have to study anymore. Well, what you find when you get out of university is, well, you keep studying, it never stops. It never stops, and in business, if you're not learning, you're not studying, you're losing. And so for me, uh, I'm constantly, I'm on, I'm on the iPod all the time, listening to the podcast, I'm reading, I'm constantly looking at videos. I never stop because the world is changing so quickly, the world of business is changing so quickly in Japan. Japan moves at a fast pace. This is probably the fastest moving business environment on the planet. So you've got to be in the front of that. Why is Dale Carnegie training so right for Japan right now? Yeah, why is Dale Carnegie the right thing for Japan at this particular point in time? Well, I think we bring a couple of things to the party here that uh, local companies don't have. We're global. And globalization is a big issue in Japan right now because they decline in population. So many Japanese companies are saying, well, our market's not going to expand. We've got to go outside. And uh, I was in Sydney last week, and I see a Uniqlo pop-up store there, and they've opened in Melbourne. And that's a good example of Japanese companies moving out of Japan because they know the market here is declining. But the point is the people who are moving with those companies outside of Japan are not global. So you've got this dichotomy or this irony or this contradiction of they must become global, but the people working in the companies are not global. 
We are both local and global. When I say local, we are 51 years in Japan, and there aren't probably too many of our competitors on the ground here in Japan amongst the Japanese domestics uh, in the training business who have been here 51 years. And we are also global, and we are across 90 countries, but we've been doing this for 102 years. So we've got this immense background, this immense proven system for we're using, which for I think for any client in Japan is the best of both worlds.